I heard from Sam, this story did not originate in the kind of that 2001 Justice League uh, JLU style and that kind That's of came true. later. Uh, you know, can we, you talk about that? Well, yeah, we've been talking about that and, and in some way it was kind of liberating because if we had known Oh, this is going to be the Justice League Unlimited reunion. Then you, then it, then suddenly you're in, in kind of return to Gilligan's Island, where you're like, well, they're going to want to see this, and they're going to want to see this, and they're going to want to see this, and then you're kind of doing a checklist, and some fans are going to be happy, and some fans are going to be sad. But instead, what we did, we started with a Justice League story, and then turning it into this makes it so that I think it's just like, oh, it's added bonus. It's like now, now all that stuff has a little more weight. I'm such a Justice League and Justice League Unlimited fan that I think it would have completely crippled me especially because I would have been like alright let's get how do we get this story to do cartwheels until I can get the question into the story how do I hear Contriner as Green Arrow and so this just allowed us to tell the story that we were dying to tell and, uh, and do something really cool with it before that uh, stunted us also we would not have been able to pay for all those actors they would There's have had to that. they would have had to show up and said nothing there would be there would have been a lot of <laughs> you know, there's a, I, there I did a visual joke for everyone who's recording this in the yeah, audio. You got, you got a couple just trust me, it was hilarious. I'm just curious, did that come into the to, into stage for the writing? Did it tweak the script or did it affect? No. Or any rewrites? I'm just curious. No, we and you know what the 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 other thing about it is that when we started this script. I'm basically incapable of writing a Justice League that doesn't sound like that cartoon because that is why I tell superhero stories. Um, so it's like, those are the voices I hear in my head anyway, right? So without knowing it was going to be Kevin Conroy as Batman when I started, that was still who I was picturing. That was still the voice that we were going for. And so it was a pretty easy, natural shift because my head at least it was always head canon because I was trying to find little ways to make it reflect far from home that unlimited episode that had the fatal five things like that so it was already kind of there are there any characters in this story that you guys have always wanted to see animated that you're like yes we finally get to do a story with these characters in it um well I haven't I've only I can't even say that it was fun to do Miss Martian that's okay. the, I, that's all I wanted to say it was really fun She's funny. She's a great foil for Batman. It's fun to do her powers. Powers are the best, and you get a lot of what Martian Manhunter can bring to the team, but with this completely distinct voice and this person who brings out something really interesting in Batman, and it's, she's actually really important to me in particular in this movie because uh, I have a, a, my friend uh, John Callan, who's also wrote on this like, action, writes for, in this world, found out what we were doing with Miss Martian and that she really wants to join the Justice League and that she has this whole relationship with Batman and Reed said did you realize when you were writing this that Miss Martian is you writing about how scared you are to write this movie <laughs> and I was like holy smokes oh, that's I did great. Good I for you, fully John. made Miss Martian into me being daunted working with Bruce Tim and Alan Burnett and you know these voice actors and stuff so. Miss Martian is prettier <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. But she can change it, so you don't know. I don't know. Did you, um, was this a collaboration between you, or did you each like have a different um, pass on the script, or how did how did the whole process? Uh, the, I, the majority of the script was written by Eric, and uh, and he got a little busy with Supergirl, and uh, and Alan Burnett and I did a, a final pass. It was actually the last two weeks of Alan working at Warner Brothers Animation, and and we finished it out writing every day, and then it was then we. They sang him a song is and off his, he went. Is this his last one? Yeah. yeah. That is uh, an unbelievable responsibility that I felt going in, knowing that Alan was shortly going to retire and that I was a part of that uh, that last Bruce Tim Allen Burnett uh, collaboration. Yes. So there's some more crippling it's anxiety for you. You, I guess you were. Apparently, you were this also is the story Jessica about Cruz. how I was a wreck doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was a, it's a lot of fun. Um, and we kind of created it all in a room together and riffed on the story and, and made something cool out of all these different parts of the DC universe. So it's a lot of fun. When when Eric started, we knew we wanted to do the Fatal Five, and and I think a, a lot, you know, Bruce and Alan and I and Sam all know pieces of the DCU, but but Eric really brought in that that Starboy story from uh, Justice Society and. Uh, and and knew a lot of uh, newer pieces that we didn't know. So uh, it, it really it dovetailed 
dovetailed well in the story we wanted to tell. Yeah. Since for the, the DC movie line, now they're experimenting with an idea of what will also be shown this weekend with Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What do you think? Now that we can experiment with other licenses, let's get this crossover on the table. Justice League versus Masters of the Universe. And would either of you oh, like to write he's it? Got it? I'm too old for Masters of the Universe. It's got to be a, 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 a... Masters of the Universe. I could do Justice League Star Trek, but it'd have to be T.O.S. You know? Would totally you support this? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It should be Start the petition. Put my Trek. name in. They've, I know. They did they, the they, they, they've done yeah. it. They did it as a comic book, but if we can do I have a completely different take. The X-Men have met the crew of the Enterprise. Yes. I know. It's time. It's time. It's, it's all right canon. Yeah. I doubt that Doctor Who Star Trek. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah that's that's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I have that too. Just <laughs> kind of curious, knowing the, the ridiculous time constraints you sometimes have to get these scripts up. Usually, always. Yeah. What do you do if you hit writers? I mean, do you, do you have to step away or do you have to turn to different source material? Or how do you. No, no, there, there is no time for writer's block. Can't, can't be writer's blocked. Uh, you, uh, you know, when I heard some advice uh, from a, a comic book pencil, um, and I, I'm blanking on, on their name right now, but. Uh, it's this artist who said, you know, you're under incredible time constraints drawing these comic books, so when you feel like you can't draw a panel, draw the gutters. Uh, yeah. Draw anything on the page, block it out, lay it out. Um, and so I do that in scripts sometimes where I'm like, I don't know what to write in this exact moment, this exact piece of dialogue or this exact joke. But what I can do is write interior. Yeah. You can move more like, of your outline into interior the, spaceship. Yeah. Like you can do like different things. You can go Metro Tower because I know that slug line is going to need to be in there. That's an amazing. Tip, well, I, so I spent all my my twenties in film school. I went twice, and uh, they were both artsy fartsy schools. So I loved. It was a great experience. But I came out of both of NYU and AFI thinking a lot about my muse and thinking about like what I want to do. And then I got this job on uh, Fox Kids on the Spider-Man animated series, and it quickly went to this. It was like me going, "Oh, it's due this Friday," <laughs> and then I haven't just I haven't talked to my muse since. Like the, like the muse was gone, yeah. you know. It was uh, like okay, it's due, and then I get paid, right? It was a uh, it was a lot of fun to do it that fast, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's tiring. Deadlines are motivators, De aren't they? Deadlines kind of make your writing better sometimes. Yeah, I, I would even say most of the time, because otherwise you just kill a lot of time. There's a lot of downtime of you staring at a muffin, thinking about a blinking cursor. So if you get the deadline, you can get some good dialogue out of it. My wife uh, always says that she knows if I'm stuck, if, if like she comes home and the refrigerator's clean. Oh, it's like, yeah. I, I was like, I can't possibly work. Look at these shelves in the refrigerator. No one can live like this. I'm an animal. You know, and then you start doing that stuff. But uh, I think with all of this material, is I, there's a kind of, there's a joy to the craft of it in that this is the, this is the story that we can tell and the amount of time we have with the amount of money we have. And maybe we can even push it so it looks a little bit better. It looks like we spent a little more money on it, and maybe it'll sound like we spent a little bit more time. And that's the... Ed Wood. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's all Corbin. That's what here, Vietti says. Here's the other thing about these. These are characters you grew up with. It, this, these are cartoons and, and styles and voice actors that I grew up with. You get in there and you've been practicing to write that story your whole life in some cases. Like, I used to write Justice League fan fiction. Like, it's like a thing that I felt very prepared to do very quickly. And, like, if you, if you put enough thought into who Batman is and who Wonder Woman is, you've had those debates with yourself, with your friends, and when it comes time for them to fight the Fatal Five, you're ready. Are you saying I can find your Justice League fanfic on Facebook? It's not posted anywhere, and I can't. I wanted to like read a piece from it on the panel, and I cannot find this. Okay. And all I remember is that I, I wrote it with my brother. Okay. It's on your MySpace page, page, isn't it? I cannot find this for the life of me, and I want to. It's like Zanga. Um, yeah. And uh, so, and I, all I remember is that it was the Justice League. The main character was Mr. Terrific. So I have changed not at all. He is. 
very present in this movie. Uh, and Red X from Teen Titans did something to like the transporters to get into Metro Tower. It was a whole that sounds thing. Awesome, we were trying to, and it was exactly it was exactly like this. It was pulling a character we loved from Teen Titans into what we imagined to be a continuation of the Justice League cartoon. I'm alerting legal. It's uh yeah, and now now we've done that with Miss Martian, and we're like, oh, we we love Young Justice. Pull her in, uh, and we have Mr. Terrific still. So uh, again. Did a lot of practice for this. Since Mr. Terrific had, his, a, had a pretty prominent role on Arrow, did that, um, was that in your mind at all in, in either avoiding anything they did or even did it influence you at all in, in oh. even choosing the character? To, the Echo to is amazing. He's an amazing Mr. Terrific. Um, I did not know he was is, on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and that, he did not. We used to, uh, Mr. Terrific on, uh, on Justice League Action. Because yeah. he's a badass character with a T on his face, and he's the third <laughs> yeah. smartest man in the T series. T-series the coolest. A uh, 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 futurist is a, a very cool profession for super, like somebody who's really doing the deep thinking. And this movie's all about the future. The bad guys are from the future. Star Boys from the future. So you have a character, Mister Terrific, who's thinking about the future constantly and is kind of his own man of tomorrow. Uh, I, I think the the Arrow show couldn't be too much of an influence just because we had sort of established Mr. Terrific in the Justice League cartoon already, a much smaller role. Mm -hmm. um, but in thinking about it, we really went back to uh, the Justice Society comics, the, the John's uh, uh, Goyer or Eagle Shum. Speaking of the future, how do you, as the creative team, how do you see the DC's uh, universe streaming service? And do you see maybe the, the movie model maybe transitioning to where it would be straight to the, the DC universe streaming service? Or, or how do you, do you think it will create more opportunities for gentlemen like you? That I is, think it will create more opportunities for for um, for all these characters. I think you and, might have just gotten me hired. And I hope <laughs> that we get to be part of it. I, yeah. I, I hope so too. Yeah, I have no idea. It's way above my pay grade, but I would be excited if that were true. Right? It's I, above I, my I always pay grade. want more of this stuff. Now, do they, are they going to... Do you guys get in your contract? I want like a whole year of DC. No! Is, I'm sorry, I, did I sound angry? No. Because, <laughs> no, yes, I was like, just like, like we no, all, like everybody that. at my floor were like, I cannot wait till they give us the free service. Right. They were like, here's your $9, I'm like, you <laughs> blood suckers. Call your manager agent and like, put it in there. A I, want, I want a free subscription yeah. of DC Universe. Only yeah. green You have no idea how much power we have. Universe. Yeah. Did you even get a code to a, to a website where they show the video with your name and watermarked across the yeah, they are, really. Yeah. Uh, well, that was fun. It was really nice talking to you guys. I mean, I don't think we, can't, we can't do any better than that. That's it. We topped it. There's a mic drop. Thank you Thank so much. You guys, congrats, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Can't wait to see